Module 16, Section 16.4, Life Cycle Costing for Rotating Machinery. In this section, we will be talking about why we need life cycle costing for rotating machinery, and we will be discussing life cycle costs of rotating machinery in a specific. In this section, life cycle costs will be discussed in the context of rotating machinery, being a pump, compressor, etc. Why life cycle costing is important for rotating machinery? As mentioned in previous chapters, the need to consider OPEX for decision making is vital for those systems in which operational expenditures occur during their life cycles. Traditional economic assessment of rotating machinery have been limited to the cost of the initial investment, and in some cases the energy costs have been considered. Rotating machinery in most cases will be part of a larger system in which the interaction of its components will determine its overall performance. In the case of a pump, piping will be critical to determine how the pump will need to be sized and will need to be operated. So understanding the system's interaction and its life cycle cost implication is critical to support long-term business objective. In the case of energy cost as mentioned by the Hydraulic Institute and Europump, pumping systems account for nearly 20% of the world's electrical energy demand. Also, energy consumed by pumping system ranges from 20 to 50% of the energy usage in certain industrial applications. So, we can see that energy is probably one of the most important considerations in the OPEX of a rotating machinery. Also some studies have shown that 30 to 50 percent of the energy consumed by pump systems could be saved through equipment or control system changes. However, there are other important facts, factors to consider. We have the maintenance cost, operation cost, the cost of unreliability, which in some cases will be one of the most important, especially in the oil and gas industry, and compliance with environmental regulations. In this slide, we represent the interaction of the different systems with the rotating machine. We have the power systems that we will need to make sure have the capability to supply the right power to the machine. Maintenance systems, we need to make sure that we have the right resources and installation to support the machine. The configuration will directly affect the reliability of the systems, as was discussed in the reliability module. The piping will directly affect the sizing of the pump and the control system will directly affect the performance and efficiency of the pump or the machinery system. In this slide we present the main groups of life cycle costing associated to rotating machinery. It is very important to identify all the costs associated with owning a particular machine or system. Different authors might use different names and grouping. Some, for example, will include maintenance as a subgroup of operations. The names and the grouping are irrelevant to the LCC exercise. The focus should be in making sure that we capture all the possible LCCs associated with the machine under the study. Initial investment costs. 
and here we have a sample of the typical cost considered for the initial investment. The cost breakdown should be developed to identify the cost of each system or component. Sometimes the cost of some subsystems components is not included by the main supplier of the equipment. It is important to read and understand all the documents, quotation, pricing, lists, contracts, etc., which define the price of different components. When buying a car, it is normal to assume that components such as the battery, spare tire, horn, etc., are all included in the offering price. This assumption is normally safe. However, when buying a rotating machine, you should never assume that a particular component is included in the price. Always check the relevant document and read the small print carefully. High quality and more robust components will normally represent higher initial costs. However, this will normally reduce life cycle costs. Installation costs sometimes are considered to be part of the initial investment cost. However, it is important to capture them in a different category as in some cases the expenditure related to the installation occur one or two years after the initial procurement. When comparing systems in which, in which the installation costs and lead times are similar, it would be possible to take them out of the analysis as their impact will not affect the main result. When installing new, new equipment or when replacing existing equipment for which power is to be supplied by an existing facility, it is very important to check the availability of appropriate energy supply capacity. Increased energy consumption might reduce inexpensive modifications to existing systems such as cabling, the motor control centers, and some point times the pipes. High-level estimates based on rule-based methods or records from previous or similar installations could be used initially to determine the initial cost. Commissioning costs may include on-site technical support by manufacturer and special performance tests. Operation costs. Energy consumption is often one of the main components of LCCs, as was mentioned previously. This should be estimated based on historic or forecasted usage based on the calculations done for power consumption. The implication of the different efficiencies of the system should be considered in order to calculate the total energy consumption. Sometimes we have different operational scenarios, so we need to understand how much time we will operate in each of these scenarios during the life cycle of an asset. Do not forget energy consumption of auxiliary systems. Sometimes they can represent significant costs. Energy rates, dollars per kilowatt hour, are required to calculate the total cost of energy. In some cases, energy costs will change depending on level of consumption, time of the day, time of the week. Requirement of auxiliary systems should be carefully checked. Installing new systems or increasing capacity of existing systems might represent significant cost. Labor costs associated with operating the system will change depending on factors such as complexity of the system, level of automation, and daily checks involved. Maintenance costs. Maintenance could be defined as all the activities that are required to preserve the intended function of the machine or system under consideration. When installing new equipment, the first guide that is normally used to determine maintenance activities is the Original Equipment Manufacturer Manual or OEM manual. 
The OEM manual includes recommendations about the frequency and scope of the each type of maintenance, including routine, overhauls, etc. Routine activities can be done on site and does not require a major equipment shutdown. Overhauls involve major work in which critical components of the machine are changed, repaired, and this normally require significant downtime. When buying new equipment for existing installation, it is important to check how well the new maintenance strategies will align with the existing strategies for the whole installation, including major and minor plant shutdowns, for example. The possibility of sharing plant downtime existing equipment can have significant effects in the life cycle cost of the system under study. Routine and overhaul maintenance. The cost of routine and overhaul maintenance can be calculated by considering the following aspects. Labor, spare parts and consumables. The cost and frequency of unplanned maintenance can be estimated using the following data. Mean time between failures for similar equipment, cost of breakdown maintenance calculated similar to the routine or overhaul cost but considering the fact that resources and spares might not be available, and the cost of lost production due to maintenance events are included under a separate category. Potential loss of production or income. How much is going to cause the unavailability of the system? The loss of production is represented based on the probability of failure of the system under study. Historical data from similar equipment or systems is a typical source of information that helps in the prediction of the performance of new systems. Also, generic reliability data sources such as Orida and Faradib could be used to predict system availability. The loss of production will be given by the predicted unavailability multiplied by the cost of loss of production per unit of time. For a system or equipment with a predicted unavailability of 1% per year, the associated loss of production will be 3.65 days of loss of production. For system in which redundancy is included, the unavailability should be calculated using availability modeling considering the proposed configuration. Increased risk due to loss of reliability with time can be included in the model. This requires complex modeling techniques. Predicting system unavailability can be a very complex task, so it is recommended that consistent assumptions and relevant data sources are considered for each of the options under study in order to avoid unrealistic scenarios. Disposal cost. These are the costs related to disposing the equipment or system at the end of its useful life. Sometimes there is a resale value that has to be considered. Also, environmental regulation might dictate the disposal methods.